What's up, guys? Welcome to another training in the Seven Figure Business Scaling Secrets. I'm super excited for this one going over the four seasons of business because I really feel like when I was going through the income roller coaster, I wouldn't have crashed and burned as hard on those months that I wasn't generating the revenue I had previously. And I think this concept really helps the solo entrepreneur and the like small businesses understand where they're at uh, in their business so they can just not look at the revenue or the profit, but be able to understand uh, that they're just in a season and to look at a different metric or KPI to look at the health of their business. So I'm super excited to share this with you. Uh, the first person who shared the four seasons of business with me um, was Brad Newman. So shout out to Brad. He, I'm sure he got it from somewhere else. Um, but he's he shared with me this very simple concept. So if you guys get anything out of this training today, hit that like button, hit that heart button. My, I, uh, What I'm just trying to do here is save you guys the pain and heartache that I went through um, in 2018. Uh, from not really understanding the seasons of business. So let's just hop right into it. Um, there are really four seasons of business. So you've got lead generation slash marketing, which you can think of as spring. You can uh, then, then you have sales, which is summer. And then you have delivery, which is fall. And you have operations, which is winter. And the common, common problem that I see is when entrepreneurs or small businesses are in delivery phase or delivery season or operation season, they're looking at the revenue metric and freaking out. Um, and a lot of times I see entrepreneurs have these big launches, make a lot of sales, and then they're freaking out one, two months later because they're not making the same revenue. They're just in the delivery season. So we get this really high high as an entrepreneur when we're making a lot of sales. And then when we're not, it shoots down, like we're just low. But if we can train our brain to focus on a different metric instead of just sales, when we're in the delivery season or we're in the operations season, that makes it a hell of a lot easier to maintain our mental health. Um, and it allows us to stay calm when revenue might not be where we want it to be. Now, one thing you also need to understand as you build out a team, you start these these seasons aren't as drastic. When you're a solo entrepreneur or just have contractors, these um, these seem to be more dra or they are more drastic. Where you have a income roller coaster and going way way up. And then you shoot way down because you don't have anybody in the running your delivery engine or running your operations. So all of your time, focus and attention as a solo entrepreneur or a small team is in delivery or operations. So you can't focus on sales or lead gen. I hope this is making sense. If you guys are confused or have questions, drop them down below. I want to make sure that you have 100 percent clarity on these four seasons of business because I think it will really, really help you as you scale your business. So um, I have a few notes here that I wanna pull up. Um, things are going to break in your business, especially as, uh, as you generate more sales, get more customers, your delivery is always gonna get to a point where it's gonna get a little bit shaky. So you're going to have to shift to more delivery mode, right? And that when that happens, your sales and your lead gen are going to go down, right? So uh, just make sure that you know, as you grow, as you scale in your first three years, shit is always going to break um, in your delivery and your operations. And you just got to know when you're, when you're doing those big launches that you're going to have to go into delivery and operations and really clean those things up. Um, I think one thing that I forgot to mention is inside of delivery, um, this is my first time training on this. So I wanted to bring it to you guys first. 
Um, and then I'm going to be optimizing this training over and over and over uh, to make it better and better. But uh, inside of delivery, um, when you're in delivery phase, you're really adding scalability to your business. So if you're an info entrepreneur or if you are a coach, what have you, you're optimizing the delivery so you can take on more clients. So you can add scalability to your business. So I hope that makes sense there. Um, and then operations, hiring systems, all of that, you are building sustainability into your business. And you need those two things, scalability and sustainability, to, to ultimately drive revenue with more leads and more sales, right? So you're gonna have to go through all of these seasons. And sometimes you go through all of these seasons as a week. I did that a lot more when I was a solo entrepreneur. I would go through all of these in a week. Sometimes you focus just on one of these departments for an entire quarter, right? Sometimes it's quarterly. Sometimes it's like every single day you're going through a new season, but just keep that in mind. And let me know if this is helpful. Drop any comments, questions, anything you have. I'm going to do a little Q&A after this for you guys. Um, and, uh, and yes, so what really helps you go through these seasons without freaking out um, is, I would say, three things that, that I've learned. Um, having a team, uh, building out project management and planning, and... Uh, having an offer that generates monthly reoccurring revenue. So I'll start with that one, the monthly reoccurring revenue. I used to only sell like products that were a thousand dollars and under, and I would have to do a launch like every other week to generate revenue. Um, and it was, it was taxing. I was always doing lead gen and sales and couldn't really devote all my attention to delivery or operations. That's when I was a solo entrepreneur. Um, and then as I grew, I started building out more high ticket programs and products. So now we have a multiple five figure investment program where we have a little, we have 32 clients in there right now. And there we generate monthly reoccurring revenue. So I'm not starting from zero every single month. So when we are in delivery and operations and focusing on those things, I am not freaking out because I'm not starting from zero every single month. And I see that to be a common problem with coaches and infopreneurs is that um, they're starting from zero every single month and they've always got to keep just focusing on lead generation and sales. And then they wonder why their clients aren't getting any results or their, their, their clients aren't happy. It's because you don't have that monthly reoccurring offer, monthly reoccurring revenue offer in place to add that sustainability and scalability into your, so you're not freaking out when you're focused on delivery and operations, um, if that makes sense. Also having a team. So for me, I hired uh, Avery Ford, who is in charge of delivery, and I hired Paul Boker, who is in charge of operations. So now we have like a person in each of these departments. I got grant for sales, um, I've got an agency for lead generation. So each of these seasons are covered. So it's not just me focused on one season at a time, if that makes sense. So team and then planning projects. What is your focus? We have three to five projects that we lay out each quarter that um, allows us to build, uh, allows us to hit our revenue goal, surpass our revenue goal and add scalability and sustainability to our business. And those projects are broken down um, to ultimately either enhance our delivery, operations, lead generation, sales, whatever we're really, really focused on that quarter, right? So those are the three things that have really helped me move from a solo entrepreneur to um, really not freaking out in each of these seasons and having a team uh, planning and monthly recurring revenue in place. So yeah, I hope that was super helpful, you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope this really helps you nail in the four seasons of, um, of business. And remember, when you generate a lot of sales and you have a small team where it's just you, most likely 
something's going to break or you're going to put a heavier focus on delivery or operations after after that month. Um, so just be cognizant of that. But I hope that was helpful. I'm going to see if there are any questions here. Let me grab this. And we'll hide that. All right. Cool. Uh, what would you hire out first? Russell, great question. And guys, keep them coming. I'm here as long as you guys have questions. Uh, first hire um, would be somebody that gives you your time and your energy back. So usually a virtual assistant um, that uh, can plug in the gaps, do the button pressing activities that isn't, um, they don't cost a lot of money. Um, really what I found are uh, uh, the VAs from the Philippines um, typically work the hardest and are really, really appreciative. And you've got to find a good one that, that speaks uh, good English, but typically they work harder than American workers um, for, for a cheaper price and they get the job done. Um, so I highly recommend uh, your first hire actually being outside of the United States at a cheap price to get button pressing activities off your plate. Um, inside of our seven figure CEO program, uh, we actually vet our VAs and basically we give our clients the all-star VAs that they can plug into their business. We have a whole spreadsheet breaking down uh, what their expertise are, how much they cost, all that good stuff. Um, so the first hire uh, VA that can get your energy and time back because there are plenty of things that you're doing in your business that you don't need to, that you can get off your plate immediately. Um, such as like, if you're running a Facebook group, accepting people into the Facebook group, welcoming, welcoming people to the Facebook group, uh, managing your calendar, setting up appointments, like uh, managing your email, uh, those sorts of things are things that you can get off your plate for like four to $12 an hour. Um, super duper easy. Um, so you've got uh, get VAs or get a VA uh, that can give you your time and energy back. Um, then uh, delivery is one of the first things that like you want to try to get out of as soon as possible because it's not a revenue generating activity, right? So the, the two things that you really want to get out of as soon as possible are delivery and operations. So in the coach or info space, uh, buh, 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 buh. Russell, tell me, tell me what you do, but in the coach or info space, um, either like you can go to the Sam ovens model and just sell info. And then he has some like Facebook lives inside of his private Facebook group. Um, what we really believe in is the accountability and impact and like holding people, like having those coaches in place. So yes, info is way more scalable, but it doesn't deliver it as big of an impact as like actually talking to a coach like inside of our seven figure ceo program you have one-on-one -on -one calls with industry experts such as brad newman for sales sarah tempty for messaging and copywriting avery ford for delivery like all that stuff um so russell for smma um for any agency work i'd recommend getting out of delivery as soon as possible where you could um hire dash clicks you can hire a white labeler you can uh, you can just hire that out as soon as possible. So you are just focused on revenue generating activities. Now, this might be a little bit different for a different person. So if you really like those things, you really like the delivery, you want to be behind the scenes, maybe you turn your um, business into um, just a delivery model, but you still need to do sales. So that's one thing that you need to be cognizant of. If you are going to be a business owner or you are a business owner, you have to get good at sales at some point, like even as you scale and you become like a legitimate CEO and are driving the vision, like you are going to have to be on stage. You're going to have to get, you're not hundred percent going to have to be on stage, but you're going to have to be the figurehead for your business. Meaning you're going to have to influence people. And one of the ways, easiest ways to learn influence is by taking a shit ton of sales calls. Right. So, uh, one thing that I see people screw, especially at the very beginning is they want to get out of sales, but ultimately if your dream is to be, a big time CEO um, and grow a business, you're gonna be you're gonna have to be you're gonna have to get good at sales at some point. So hope that helps. 
Uh, yeah, drop down more questions. Um, I am here as long as you need me. Uh, would prefer to do sales. Awesome, Russell. So if you're doing SMMA, uh, I suggest looking at Andrew Geikwad. He has a white labeling service. Um, and we did a interview in here. You can just type in Andrew in the search search bar and look for that interview with Andrew Geikwad um, or using dash clicks. Um, those, those are my two recommendations. If you guys have any more recommendations for white labeling, I would drop them down below. Um, but in terms of like really growing your business, it starts with cash flow, right? So you want to get out of the delivery and operations as, as soon as possible so you can generate cash flow for your business and create those systems and those machines to generate cash flow. Like that's why I really, really like Facebook groups is because it helps you generate a shit ton of cash flow right away organically without having to put any money in ad spend. And if you do go the route of putting money into ads, which which I recommend, like at some point we're going to move over to ads. We're actually in the um, uh, actually in those phases. Um, but uh, but um, start with organic generate a shit ton of cash flow, and then you can invest into higher quality people to join your team um, for your delivery, for your operations, and get, get that shit off your plate. But uh, when I started an agency, when I was running my agency, I started off with door-to-door -door sales. Like I just would walk in uh, chiropractic office, walk into restaurants, walk into gyms, and get the sale that by doing door-to-door -door sales it increases intimacy immediately. And starting out, it's really hard to get that base underneath. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a roundabout answer. But yeah, keep dropping the uh, keep dropping the questions down below. Happy to answer any of them. I hope this training on the four seasons of business was super helpful for you. Um, it's uh, it definitely would have put my mind at ease if I would have just understand understood the different elements or what I was ultimately focused on because my time and attention was going to delivery, but then I was freaking out about revenue and it makes sense that like, like my revenue was going down because my time and attention was on delivery, but you can, you can still generate uh, a shit ton of revenue and drive marketing and sales. If you have somebody in the, in the delivery, uh, seat and they're running the engine and they're running the machine for you. Um, but starting out as a solo entrepreneur, your time, attention, and focus can only be in one season at a time. That's why you hire. That's how you scale, um, is by putting people in those different seats. And one thing that I learned from, um, Keith Cunningham, really good book, um, road less stupid, but he talks about the engine, the machine, and the dashboard. And having that built out for, um, for each uh, department and for each offer that you create, basically anything you create in your business should have an engine, a machine, and a dashboard. So for example, if you're creating, out an, or creating a new offer, you want the engine to drive the sales, whether that's organic or, or paid, um, and the strategy on that. Then you want the uh, then you want the machine to actually deliver the results for your clients. Have that built out and running, and you want to have the dashboard so you have insight into the uh, uh, into the marketing, the sales, and into the client results. Once you have those things built out, then you can move on to the next thing. Like like Warren Buffett, I bring this up all the time, but Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, uh, the number one contributor to their success is their focus right? And focus on one thing at a time and really build out that engine, that machine, and that dashboard before you move on to the next thing. So if you're focused on building out a department in your business, be focused on it and be focused on building that engine, that machine, and that dashboard. If you're focused on an offer, be focused on it and don't split your attention and really build out that engine, that machine, and that dashboard. So hope that helps. This may be off topic. I love off topic questions. If you guys want to drop any more off topic questions, like what's my favorite flavor of pudding or anything like that, let me know uh, and I'll answer that for you. Um, but this may be off topic. Uh, advice for walk-ins. Okay, cool. So we're kind of going down the route of agency here. 
Um, and really what we focus on as a business is uh, coaching, consulting, and course creation. But uh, I ran an agency back in the day. Um, topics for uh, walking in. Um, I just, it was, it was just volume. I, I told my brain to shut the fuck up because it's scary. And like, I would sit in my car sometimes being like, oh, I don't want to go in at that point because I wasn't confident in myself. But you need to tell your brain, shut the fuck up and just have certainty. Like it all starts with just like being certain that you can deliver it. Um, and in terms of walking in, I could give you strategies or tactics, but it really starts with the certainty in what you are delivering for them. If you don't have that, you're not going to be effective in your business at all. Um, and certainty will drive results. So, um, and, and certainty comes through action, taking more action and like really saying that, oh, your shit works. Um, and you're going to fail some, you're going to fail a lot. Like if you're not comfortable with failure as an entrepreneur, you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. Um, but volume, just go in, um, make eye contact. Um, and, um, uh, the, uh, how I used to do it. And this is kind of slimy, but, uh, you could do it this way. Um, for gyms, I would go in and, um, ask for, a, uh, a one week free pass and say I was new to the area and all of that. And they would start selling me on their gym. And then I would slide in and say, I actually run Facebook ads for gyms. And like freaking 80% of the time they would be like, Oh, we need, we need more clients. Like we're actually, we're actually trying that out right now. Um, so then I would go in, give them an audit and like that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know how agencies are teaching it nowadays, but that was that was pretty commonplace, like giving an audit to the business owner and then going that direction. But I haven't done that in, in a couple of years, two and a half years. So, um, yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, I like the value you're providing. Dude, thanks so much. Thanks for being part of Authority Accelerator, brother. Certainty is key. Um, let me see if I get results. Certainty results, no action results. Huh? There's like a Tony Robbins infographic. Let me see. Um, action results, uh, certainty graphic, Tony Robbins. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but there's this infographic that, uh, there we go. Cool. The belief and success cycle. Um, I love this. So I went to a Tony Robbins event uh, last month. Um, and this was so simple. And I'm sure he's been teaching this for years and years and years. Let me see if I can pull up a good picture of it. Um, but I wish I had known this when I was first starting out or just do this like framework, this concept. Uh, let me turn my screen around. Oh, show stream. Um, so this one, um, Tony can explain it way better than me. This is from Tony Robbins but uh, potential action results belief. Uh, so this is the belief and success cycle. So if you're looking for success in your life, just know this is how you do it. And it just cycles over and over and over. Um, so you need to believe in yourself, have certainty in what you're doing that creates potential. And the more potential you have, the more action you take and the more action you take, the more results that you get the more results that you get, the more belief and certainty you have in yourself, which increases potential. It's just about momentum, right? And just going through this cycle and momentum for yourself over and over and over and over. Um, and one way that Tony uh, helps people get results is by putting results in advance in their mind. So this is why people tell you like create a vision board or, um, 
or visualize like your future, all that and having a vision, because that will give your, your mind can't distinguish like from what you're looking at and what's in your mind, essentially. So that will give you results in advance, which will give you more certainty and belief, which will give you more potential, which will make you take more action, which will give you better results, so on and so forth. So I thought that was pretty cool um, cycle. Um, so really simple, uh, but a really good concept to think about, um, especially when you're first starting out, like you're not gonna have 100% certainty and belief, but um, the more action you take, the more results you get, the more certainty and belief that you'll have, right? So that's why everybody says it comes down to action. But if you don't have the certainty and belief enough to have the potential to take the action, then you're not gonna you're not gonna implement or you're not gonna take the action. So yeah, I thought that was a super simple, awesome concept. James, what's up, brother? Um, but yeah, uh, what other questions do you guys have? Drop them down below. AMA, ask me anything. Happy to answer anything for you guys. And just got my two comic club award up. So excited for that. Um, probably have the ugliest funnel um, to win the two comma club award. It's my group growth and monetization blueprint funnel. So ugly, so disgusting. Don't check it out. Um, but uh, yeah. From click funnels helped me make seven figures uh, through one funnel. Um, if you guys were wondering what that is. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of rambling now. I don't see any more questions. What's up, Dino? Um, but yeah, I'm going to hop off. Hope this was helpful. Watch a replay. Uh, if you got any value out of this, drop a heart, drop a like. Uh, helps the algorithm, helps us reach more people. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.